In Creole Parametric, you can use the offset command in sheet metal mode to create new primary walls. We'll take a look at three different use cases. First use case is for creating new primary walls in a sheet metal part. So here I have a part with a primary wall and a flange wall. To create an offset wall, you can go to the walls overflow menu. Here is the offset command. And then you can pick a surface. You can also select a quilt. So for example, let me select this surface here in the model. If you take a look at the interface, first you have a value for the offset dimension, how much you're going to offset the new wall. And you can see as I drag it in here, the number changes on the dashboard. I can punch in the exact number that I want to use. Notice that in this case, the thickness is grayed out because the thickness is established by the first wall. On the References tab, you can see what surface is being used. If I go to the Options tab, here we have the offset method. The default is normal to surface. Just like with the regular offset command in standard part mode, you also have other options like automatic fit and controlled fit. There is a collector for any surfaces that you want to designate to have special handling. Underneath the sheet metal options, you can automatically add bends on sharp edges. And if you add those bends on those sharp edges, you can choose what you want to use as the radius. You can choose whether you want to merge it to the existing model. You can merge walls if they already touch or do not merge to the model. Here we can choose to keep the merged edges and keep the edges of the bends. There is a bend allowance tab like you have with most different sheet metal features and the properties tab. That's just another place where you can change the name. I will hit the check mark in order to complete the new primary wall. If you take a look down at the bottom of the screen, here you can see that we have two disparate pieces of sheet metal geometry. Now let's say that I wanted to grab all the different surfaces from the first wall and the flange that's attached to it. I'm gonna take that offset that I just created and suppress it for a moment. We go back to the offset command well, I can select this surface. If I hold down the control key, it's not allowing me to select any of the other different surfaces. So alternatively, you can create a quilt of the surfaces that you want to use first. So I'm gonna say, yes, I want to cancel. Let me then start off by selecting a surface in the model. I'm gonna hold down the control key and select some of the other different surfaces. Let's rotate the part and select these other different surfaces on the side. Then I will choose copy and then paste. And you can see a preview of the copied quilt that will result. Let's hit the check mark. And now with that quilt still selected, if I go to the walls drop down list and choose offset, well, it's automatically going to have that selected. Be aware you don't have to have the quilt selected before entering into the command. But here, if I Put my mouse over the model, it's just highlighting that one surface from the copy. I'm going to tap the right mouse button to query select to the quilt. And here you can see that we have the drag handle and we can choose the offset distance. You can see how if I try to exceed the radii of the inside edges, it's going to fail. So let me change the value for the offset distance. Then I can hit the check mark. And there we have a new offset wall. Let me take that copy and then hide it just so that everything has the same part color. For the second use case, let's take a look at creating a sheet metal body in a standard part. If I expand the design items folder, there are six different bodies in this part. The front cover part is active. I'm actually gonna hide that so I can see a surface on the inside. To create a new sheet metal body in this part, I will click on the new body command and for the name of the body, I'm just gonna call it SMT, short for sheet metal. It is automatically made the active part. It shows an empty box because it has no geometry or features. Let me select it and then right click on it. And from the pop-up menu, you can choose to convert to sheet metal. So I will choose that. And now we get the convert dashboard where you could choose either a driving surface if you already had features that you wanted to convert or you could choose shell. But I'm just going to use the empty body option 
and then hit the check mark in order to make my sheet metal body. You'll notice now we have the sheet metal tab in part mode. You also have the model tab that you can go back to for creating standard part features. But let's go back to sheet metal and then I can choose from the walls drop down list to create an offset and I'll select a surface in the model, just one single surface. Let's drag it up a value of 25 and then I can hit the check mark. And so now we have our sheet metal wall in the original part. Oh yeah, let me go back to this one over here. I'm going to choose edit definition. In this case, I do have the ability to change the thickness because there is no sheet metal geometry in here. Let's make it big enough for you to see. And then I can hit the check mark. And as always, middle mouse button is the same thing as hitting the check mark in a dashboard. And I show the third use case in my very first video, tips and tricks in top down design. Here I have an assembly model. In the assembly model, I have a skeleton. And this skeleton represents the different racks that I'm going to have in this sheet metal chassis. So I'm going to start off by creating a new part in the assembly. I'll choose create. And let me change the type to part. And this is going to be a sheet metal part. And I'll just call it rack one. And then click the OK button. And then here it has my part that I want to use for the default template. Let me change the default template to make sure that I am using one with absolute accuracy and metric. Let me then choose the OK button. And for this component, I will right click and hold and use the default constraint in order to locate it. So now I have my first part in here. I'm going to select the rack. And then from the mini toolbar, I can choose to activate it so that any new features will be placed into this part. Now I can use a copy geometry feature. And in this particular situation, let me tap the right mouse button to get the quilt to highlight. And that is good for the geometry. I will hit the check mark in order to complete the copy geometry feature. And now to make it easier for you to see, I can click on the rack part and then choose open from the mini toolbar. There you can see the copy geometry. And now I've got the quilt that I can use for creating an offset wall. Let's go to the walls drop down and then I will choose offset. And for the references, let me query select in order to get the quilt selected. And typically when I do this with top down design, I end up using an offset of zero because I want those surfaces as my reference for the new sheet metal geometry that I am going to create. Let me use a much bigger thickness just so that you can see it. If I go to the options tab, here we have that option to add bends on the sharp edges and it's using a value equal to the thickness. Once again though, we have a drop down list if you wanted to try using two times the thickness instead or let's just go back to one times the thickness or you could manually enter in the value that you wanted to use. And then I will hit the check mark and now let's hide the copy geometry feature. And in that way, we have reference geometry from the skeleton in the assembly. If we ever change the skeleton, then the geometry in this part will update. So there you have it, three different use cases for the offset command in sheet metal mode.